Portholes are great for allowing access to the baby without opening the entire wall, thus reducing heat loss. Before opening the porthole doors, we recommend turning on air boost to help with thermal stability. Make sure there is nothing in the way of the porthole doors and that the infant is in the center of the bed as you open them. Never leave the patient unattended when the porthole doors are open. It is important not to prop or tape open doors in an unlatched position. Once you have completed caring for the infant, make sure to close and latch each porthole door that was opened. The porthole doors are silent in closing if the latch is pulled back. Make sure the latch is fully engaged and the porthole is securely closed. You must pull on the porthole door every time a porthole is closed to make sure the porthole door is latched. Make sure all latches operate correctly every time the porthole is closed. Remember, unlike the bedside panel latches, the portholes have no visible indication the latch is secure. If you suspect a porthole latch is broken or defective, or a porthole will not securely close, remove the device from service and contact qualified service personnel for repair. Canopy covers are great for protecting the infant from light and noise. Some facilities use blankets or other items for this. Regardless of what you use, always double check the porthole doors are fully latched before covering the portholes with anything. The porthole door might appear closed if the covering is holding it closed, but if it is not fully latched, the infant could push the door open and fall. Make sure the entire care team, including physicians, other caregivers, and parents are also aware of these important operation mechanisms of the bed. If you need better access to the baby, the side bed panels can be opened and closed as needed. The panel at the humidifier end of the bed, or south end, can only be raised or lowered when the canopy is raised. As with the porthole doors, we recommend turning on air boost before opening any of the panels to help with thermal stability. Make sure there is nothing in the way of the panel. This can include vent tubes, billy soft cables, IV lines, and monitor cables. Also, check that the infant is in the center of the bed as you open the panels. Remember, Never leave the patient unattended when any of the bedside panels are open. If you need to turn away from the bed for any reason, close and secure the panel. Gently lower the panel to avoid allowing it to swing freely. The wall can be damaged if it falls open on its own. At a minimum, it will make a loud bang, startling the baby and negatively impacting neurodevelopmental care. Once you have completed caring for the patient, close the panel. Grab the open panel and raise it until it is in its most upright position. At this point, the panel is not secure. The panel remains upright, but the latches show a red tab indicating they are not secure. This label is a reminder to check the latches and make sure the red tab is not showing. If a nurse walked away from the bed at this point, the panel would stay upright. But if the patient made contact with the panel, it could open and the patient could fall. In order to fully secure the panel, you must pinch the latches on both ends of the panel, push the panel into place, and release the latches. The latches seat into place, and the red tab is no longer visible. It is important to make sure all latches operate correctly every time the bedside panel is closed. If the red tab on the bedside panel is visible, then the bedside latch is not secure. You must gently pull on the bedside panel every time the panel is closed to make sure the panel is latched. Make sure the entire care team, including physicians, other caregivers, and parents, are also aware of these important operation mechanisms of the bed.